I want to win this game. I don't know. We're all thinking the same thing. Like, yeah, we want to win every game. But I want to win this game badly. Let's talk for a few minutes, everybody. What's up, Cerebral Football fans? My name is Steven Heider. This is Gate City Sports Channel. Hey, if you're new to the channel, it's maybe the first, second, third time you caught my content and you enjoyed today's discussion. Hey, look, we just crossed over 6,300 subscribers. We're on a journey towards 7,500 subscribers. I would love to add you to the Cerebral Football community. Just need you to subscribe to do that. To all G subscribers, hat in hand here, guys, asking you for a favor. Hit that like button, smash the thumbs up button, help me spike the algorithm and get this in front of new people. We could potentially convert into our little community here on YouTube. Let's talk. There's not going to be a lot of opportunities this season to uh, stack wins against quality opponents. And I think it's even argumentative to say that this wipes the slate clean in terms of getting quality wins against quality opponents because let's be honest about the Vikings. They haven't played a lot of January football. They haven't made the playoffs very much. You know, since the 2017 season when we basically sent them home packing and made them watch us win a Super Bowl in their stadium, they haven't really been that relevant. You know, they've been in the hunt. They've been right there really close a couple times to clinching a spot, but ultimately it kept falling flat on their face. So I do think there's complexity to what I'm about to say here, right? Because I don't know that that necessarily crosses, crosses it off. But projecting forward with a new coaching staff, okay, with a couple of new faces added there on defense, like Jordan Hicks and Smith, Sedarius Smith there. I think there's some things about that football team that makes it a quality opponent, right? I do think that this team in particular has an opportunity and a chance to finish above 500, which is kind of the underlying discussion point. But more than anything, I think this is a chance to grade Jonathan Gannon. A lot of people are not feeling very, very high on Jonathan Gannon right now. I would be lying to you if I didn't, if I didn't state outright that I don't have my own doubts that this guy can get it together. I know the personnel's there. I know that everything that happened last week wasn't completely Jonathan Gannon, but he's not absent of blame. I mean, he, he, took, he had a part in this. But with that said, I think this is one of the few chances on the season that we're going to get an opportunity to play a quality opponent at quarterback. I don't know that we're going to get too many of these opportunities this year, just looking at the schedule, to stack this type of, you know, kind of momentum-building step here against a quality quarterback. And I'll just jump, you know, start it off from the, the jump here, and I'll just say that Kirk Cousins is going to be a difficult matchup for the Eagles because, number one, he doesn't hold the ball very long. As a matter of fact, if you go and look at his time to throw, it was 2.59 seconds, which, judging from the 2021 season, was the sixth lowest out of the quarterbacks that qualify by filtering by 20%, it was the sixth lowest number out of all quarterbacks. He's not going to hold the ball for an eternity. So you're not going to get an eternity to get your pass rush home. It means that guys like Josh Sweat, it means guys like Hassan Reddick, you know, Javon Hargrave, these dudes, have, you know, Milton Williams, Fletcher Cox, this defensive line's got to get home fast. Right? He's, he's not going to give you a ton of time to get to him. And that plays out with the fact, if you look at his pressure to sack rate, his pressure to sack rate is 13.6%, which is the fourth lowest. He's good. He gets the ball out of his hands quickly, and he doesn't take hits, and he doesn't take sacks. That's a really good marker. In terms of doing that, guys, I mean, it's not like a Jared Goff situation where you got a quarterback that will make an error necessarily if you bring pressure. I'm not saying you still can't pressure even a good quarterback into making a mistake. Mistakes happen when... Things don't go as you expect. But with that said, his turnover-worthy pass rate is 2.8%, which is 11th, which means he's in the upper third of the NFL, which means he's solid with the ball in his hands. He doesn't make, you know, mistakes that often. His big-time throw rate shouldn't be a shot, guys, with Justin Jefferson there, Adam Thielen, K.J. Osborne. I mean, there's offensive talent in that room. And he's got a 5% big-time throw rate, which tied 12th with Jalen Hurts. So... Once again, kind of in that threshold of the upper third of the league. He gets the ball out of his hands fast. He doesn't take sacks, unnecessary sacks normally. And he can hit you. You know, he's got a good enough arm to beat you over the top, right? He's a quality opponent. 
This is a quality opponent we're stacking ourselves against here. This is going to be one of our few opportunities for Jonathan Gannon to really, re, you know, reclaim the, the, the feelings behind the defense, right? That, hey, man, if we can really get after this guy, we can really make this guy look like, you know, maybe there was an overestimation of his abilities in week one. Maybe we got something going here defensively. This is one of the few opportunities we're going to get. We don't have many of them this, up, this upcoming season. There's only a few guys on this schedule that we're going to get these opportunities against. What I will say, how can you get this team? Where is the flaw in Kirk Cousins' game? To me, it's getting him into compromising third and long situations. Okay? So if we can win on first down and we can win on second down and put this team into a compromising third down situation, something that we did really good between the second, third, fourth, fifth possessions of the game and the sixth possession of the game where we had a pick six. When you looked at that sequence of five possessions in a row, we put Detroit in compromising situations, and then we had great results from it. Four three and outs and a pick six. If you can get him behind the sticks, if you can get that offense to be disrupted early on, which means you've got to stop the run. If you can do that early on in downs, there is one thing in the underlying analytics in the film study about Kirk Cousins where we can win. If you look at it on PFF, PFF calls it short of sticks percentage. If you look on the next-gen stats, they call it air yards to the sticks. Football Outsiders calls it Alex, A-L-E-X, which is called air less expected on third down. Some of these aren't free, guys. PFF, you got to pay for. Sis, you got to pay a lot of money for. it. Football Outsiders, you got to pay for it too, but it's reasonable. Next-gen stats is free, so I'll give you that one because you guys can go look it up yourself, but it's not the most specific. I think Alex, because it's specific, the third down is the most, you know what I mean? It's the one that gets to the heart of what we're discussing here. But next-gen stats, air yards to the six, has him as the 10th lowest graded quarterback at negative 1.4 yards, meaning one and a half yards almost away from the sticks is where he, generally speaking, places the football. But when you go to Alex, he's got the sixth lowest grade on third down, which is negative 0.6. My point here is this, guys. If we can get them in a compromising third down situation so we can get after him, you have to bring pressure, Gannon. I'm not sitting here asking for every game for Jonathan Gannon to be something that is not his defensive concept. But in games like this, you've got to make a quarterback uncomfortable. And if you win on first and second down, this should give you the green light to bring pressure on third down because this guy is going to throw it short of the sticks. Then you just need to rally and tackle. That's where they can be got. This is where the football game can be won. On third down and compromising, when I say compromising, above six yards, so third and six and above, because you've done a solid job on first and second down, you can force Kurt Warner into not wanting to get hit, not wanting to take a sack, to throw the ball short of the sticks, then we just need to rally and make the tackle. That's where, I, to me, I think the key to this game is defensively, at least. We need to put them in a compromising third down situation. Put another way, you got to win first and second down to do that. And then this particular quarterback, he will give you an opportunity to rally to the football and make a play. But you got to be careful. The one thing I do not want you guys to be confused about is this. Do not think that Kirk Cousins cannot air the ball out. He's got a tremendous arm. Kirk Cousins has a very underrated arm. He can throw the ball downfield. It's just that he doesn't want to take hits. He doesn't want to get sacked. He knows what that does to your offense. So he's more willing to try to give his guys an opportunity for a yak than most other quarterbacks are. You can rally and tackle. You can get out of the situation. We'll see, though, guys. All right, y'all. I appreciate y'all so much. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think and how you feel about this game. Monday night, guys. Home crowd. I'm feeling good about our opportunities. I'm feeling good about our chances here. All right, y'all. I appreciate y'all, and I'll see y'all in the next video.